This Yakumeji, they are the first creative substances or the first creative seed responsible for the world below them. So these creative substances or creative seed that we call Yeku, they gave birth to the deep light energies within the within space, which the whites are calling nebula. Now, these light energies descended and they created Gu and Da, the sun and the moon. I'm just picking it up so that I don't explode everything. Mm -hmm. So, now we are dropping to the level of Gu and reasons and benefits of Gu as far as the world below them are concerned. Now, Gu as the sun and the moon. Before the planetary entities or bodies were created, the energies beyond Gu and Da, which is the sun and the moon, were calling upon Guda, the sun and the moon, that they want to come and form a planetary system. So they were calling. So if you go to a first state that we call Yekushingle, it says that, Ahon Shivinyolo, Yekushingoliovio. Bahon Shivinyo Nama, Yekushingoliovio. Emikwele Moraji, Bachima Vola, Patoma, and Bena Vola, Batomo. Bahon Shivinyolo, Yekushingoliovio. Ever Sakaja will be Yekushing, let me to Waya 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 Waya. Never more. Plummy Bobo Good away, Plummy Bobo. But Fika Jerler is the sun. Fika Jerler Zido Plummy Bobo Melima Vodu away, Plummy Bobo. So the creative energies were calling upon the sun and the moon that. They should help them and bring them into the world of embodiment. And they helped them, and our earth was formed. But before the earth was formed, we have what we call the element of fire, air, water, and the earth element. These four elementals descended and formed the planet Earth. But then, it was the air element that came first. Follow by the creative kuliao, the creative seed, then followed by the creative fire elementals, and finally the water element came, and then formed a solid earth that we see, not just the earth, but the other planetary systems, or the other planets. Now, the planet was established, and if you go to a far code that we call Belete, or let me go back a little, Poli Besan, Poli Besan indicated that when the planet was ready, it was in a state of heat energy. So it needed water energies to calm down and cool tempest. So when the water energies came, they covered the entire earth. So the earth became a water stone. Fumakba. But Zoya Maduna Dala Kosui, Mikbo Majerae, Mikbo Majera Magbanya Chiae, Balea Humanya Olalo. But no matter how you make all the love for the whole show, but how many are so boy, but how we no many are boy day, she ma jali we no many are boy ya. But le azu many are all alone. No matter how you make all the love for the whole show, but how many are so boy, but how we no many are boy day, she ma jali we no many are boy ma. So. The earth was covered by water. I mean, the entire earth. You cannot see the earth with your eyes. All that you can see is water. So at that point, Polik Besan called the earth Fumakpe, meaning water stone. So the water came purposely to give birth 
to the kulia, the energies or the, the life seed within the planet. So after impregnating the life seed within the planet, the ocean, the water have to go to one side for this kulia, which are the seed to germinate. Then later and later, women appeared. But then, the sun and the moon is the father and the mother of the entire world below them. Now, why is it that important for our ancestors to respect, to have attention for this sun and the moon? The sun is the one taking care of the day energy. Night energy is being taken care of by the moon. Now, what the sun does in the daytime is to help with the creative seed or to help with implantation of the creative seed. So man is in the embodiment of the sun. Woman is in the embodiment of the moon. Now, we men, as I said, we are representing the sun here on this planet. Women are equally representing the moon here on this planet. So, the sun is the one implanting the creative seed into the earth. The moon is the one that is giving life into it and developing and making sure that this creative seed grows within the earth. So if you see a man, we are in the image of the sun. As you can read from the Yevopo Agmalama, that Man is in the image of, or let us create man yeah, in our. Agbala, manya agbala ka. Amodro hoso agbala. Yenye. A bibla. Bibla. Okay. Continue. <laughs> so, with that aspect, man is in the image of the sun, and the woman is in the image of the moon. Now, if you look at it carefully, I said. The sun is the one implanting the creative seed into the earth. If you have a house and you neglect that house for a few years, before you come back, you see leaves, herbs, everything germinating from the earth. But once you are in that house, moving up and down, you will not see this creative seed germinating. But once you step away for some time, you ask yourself, where from these herbs, why are they germinating here? It's because they were what constitute the earth. They live within the earth and they can die. So, as the sun is radiating energy onto the earth every day, it is implanting the creative seed. And in the night, the moon will come and help this creative seed to grow. No wonder if you put a corn or any seed into the soil, this seed will never germinate during the daytime. It will only germinate during the night time. The reason is that the sun takes care of the day energy and the moon takes care of the night energy. That is why in the night, sickness are worse. In the daytime, you get relief because the sun will radiate enough energy to you. And when the night energy comes as the moon, it is the energy of growth. So even if you are sick, it will increase the energy of growth. The sickness level will go high. So the women are in the embodiment of what? The moon. Now, the concept of God. Why do we human beings have to call upon God? And why today, why do we think God exists be beyond our universe? Because the, the concept of God is lost to humanity. The very people who are championing God, 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 have little knowledge about God. Why am I saying that? Our ancestors, in their wisdom, they are aware that the sun and the moon, which is Gouda, 
are the two bodies or heavenly bodies responsible for life. So, this concept was given to the white group or the Europeans, and at the time, they equally did not understand the knowledge very clearly. So, when they want to redefine it in their own way, they, they got messed up the entire concept of God, and they said God is somewhere in heaven and all of that. But there is nothing like that. The concept of God lives within us, and we, man and woman, are in their embodiment. Now, we have our ancestors have given this knowledge to the Europeans. So, they adopted the word Guda. Once they adopted this word Guda, they've been practicing it for ages. If you go there, the Christian society was founded on the sun energy. The sun God, which is Buddha. No wonder when they were going to draw Jesus Christ, they put the sun as a symbol for Jesus Christ. And if the Muslims are also going to worship God, you see them using the moon as God because the concept that they took from us is about the sun and the moon, which we call Gu and Da or Guda. If you go to India, they call it, instead of Guda, they call it Buddha. It is the same thing. If you go to other places, instead of Guda, they call it Judah. It is the same thing. Again, if you go to the Islam, because they believe in the moon, which is Da, all their celebrations they have to pay homage to this very da, which is the moon. They call it Idi Ada or Ramada. All of these things or this knowledge system was coined from our ancestors' knowledge of a fan. So the word God came out of the word Guda. And this Guda originally is a fan word or it is our own ancestors' knowledge system. That was given to them and they corrupted it. And at the end of the day, the world now is deviated from the fact. And now, is God actually, God, is it to be worshipped? No. We don't have to worship God. The reason is that you, man and a woman, you are in the image already of God. Remember, the sun is still giving you the day energy. And this energy is always there constantly. But then, it will interest you that our ancestors, in their wisdom, having knowledge about Buddha, God, they established a creative energy, or let me call it a deity, that represents Gu and Da. In our environment. Why did they do that? Which is, which are the deities? Today, the group of people that are in position of this deity, we call them Lashibiao, we call them Teishiao, we call them Laklao, and this group of people their clan name is Guda. Today they have corrupted it and they are calling so many other names. But it is Bu, Blanc, as they are calling it today. But the word is not Bu, Blanc. It is actually Guda. Because of the long sojourn that our ancestors had, many of these things got corrupted. And we are now pronouncing or calling our own energies with different kinds of names or corrupted names. So it is the same thing that we call Nyigblan or Togbi Nyigblan. So this group of human race having in their possession Gu, as somebody will call it the god of iron, and Da, which is representing the mother 
energy. Now, these two energies that we call go and da, as I said, they are what constitute the world below them. So without the sun, without the moon, there is no human being. There's going to be no planet. In fact, should the sun stop its work, should the moon also stop working today, that's going to be the end of the universe. I mean, the end of our world. But, so if we believe that there is God sitting somewhere, where is that God going to be when the sun and the moon are no more working and the whole planetary system have to disappear and go back to Sa?